Welcome back to my new video and it's been a year since I made a video on YouTube and I'm super excited to be back on. So in this video I'm going to explain you how a private space agency did a marvelous job in the field of rocket science by building reusable rockets which initially thought it was nearly impossible. And Elon and his team has done a lot of innovation for building a reusable rocket and I'm going to explain you in detail the interesting engineering behind it so by the end of this video you will understand how a rocket works and how it is different from the rockets built by the SpaceX I'm gonna start from really basic so you're gonna understand it and very easily and I'm gonna explain you in the most easiest way as possible and as always so watch this video till end and let's jump right into the video so the term rocket science is something which we describe something which is very difficult which is very extremely difficult and yes that is true because it is a combination of all different branches let it may be electronics engineering computer science or mechanical engineering it is so so difficult and you or you don't often see startups in this particular segment because it is a very high capital intensive business if any one rocket got failed then there will be huge loss to the company and that is why it is considered as the most difficult branch in engineering and yes that is true and I have deep passion towards this particular field so I have started reading this book Aero Thermodynamics of Gas Turbine and Rocket Propulsion System so by Gordon so this book is so much interesting and also it really difficult for me to understand some of the concepts so so for those concepts I searched on YouTube internet and I somehow got the picture about uh, rocket engineering and the propulsion system so let us understand how a rocket works before that starting off with the basic principles of Newton's third law of motion uh, which states that every action has equal and opposite reaction so this principle is used in rockets which I'm going to explain you in a while so let us see the components or the system in a rocket so it is different for different rockets but mainly we have uh, three parts one is the payload system, second is the guidance system, third is the propulsion system. So coming to the first one which is called as a payload system, a payload is nothing but a simple carrier or kind of an information that carries information uh, which is used to uh, for the operation. So a simple payload can be a satellite which carries information. So this is what a payload system is called and second is the guidance system. Guidance system is something which has a lot of sensors and a programmed flight computer which is used to get the precise location of the rocket and tilt the rocket into the right trajectory to reach the earth orbit. So this guidance system is all having uh, the software powering the rocket and the onboard computer and different sensors that are used to uh, get the precise location of the rocket so this is what the guidance system is the third one is the propulsion system this is the most important section of the entire rocket design and moment of launch vehicle as this consists of oxidizer and fuel so when combustion happens the action is expulsion of gas out of the rocket engine as the rocket fuel burns it creates a hot gas and it is expelled out of the back from the rocket at high speed so the reaction is forward motion of the rocket. So in simple terms, when the rocket has to move upward to the uh, to reach the outer earth orbit, it has to apply some upward force which is called as a thrust. And more, if you put more amount of weight in the payload system, then more number of boosters are required and more an amount of up thrust need to be generated. More combustion should happen. So this is what a rocket and how it actually works. And I hope you understand. So once you understand what is a payload system, what is a propulsion system, what is a guidance system, you can easily understand how the SpaceX has done this uh, reusable rocket. Very simple. And of course, the software powering that SpaceX landing, uh, SpaceX boosters landing is not yet open sourced. But at least I can explain you the working principle of it, how it is coming down back to the Earth's surface. 
So when a rocket goes up, it has to do the stage separation. What is stage separation is when rocket reaches to a certain height, the fuel in the booster one will be exhausted. Hence the particular stage, that particular part is uh, separated out from the entire rocket and the stage two ignition starts. And when the stage one, in the stage one, when the booster, when the booster one got separated, the overall weight is reduced. And when the inner ignition begins, uh, it will automatically needed less amount of up thrust as the weight got reduced and less combustion will happen. And this will help in making in reaching the rocket to the earth orbit. So this is what why the stage separation is important and the booster which got separated will eventually fall back onto earth over an ocean. So and it becomes useless. This is the pain point what SpaceX wants to uh, reuse the boosters and bring back those boosters back onto Earth safely and then reutilize it. This is what the pain point that SpaceX wants to uh, solve. And now we, we are going to understand how the SpaceX made uh, reusable rockets. It's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, so let's discuss about reusable rockets. So the Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket. So when the stage separation happens, the stage one will follow a particular uh, flight path and it will land back onto the Earth's surface. And stage two contains the payload. So when stage, when the rocket reaches to a certain height, the rocket start up and everything process is same. When rocket reaches to a certain height, the stage separation begins and the rocket will follow a particular flight path because the booster is designed in such a way, the booster is pre-programmed with the help of software powering SpaceX Falcon 9 and it will land, it will follow a particular flight path and this is possible with the help of uh, flight control system and the guidance system. So let me explain you the flight control system, what is flight control system, then I'll explain you what is guidance system so that you will understand how this was possible by the Falcon 9 and how did uh, SpaceX achieve this thing. So the flight control system consists of mainly three parts. Uh, one is the cold gas thruster. The second is the grid fence. The third one is reignitable engine. So when the booster comes down, it has to ignite automatically when it reaches to a certain height above the Earth's surface. So that is why you need a reignitable engine. So coming to the cold gas thruster. The cold gas thruster, the Falcon 9 is equipped with 8 nitrogen cold gas thruster and it is used to control the orientation of the rocket booster. Okay, And the grid fence, coming to the second one which is grid fence, there are 4 grid fence attached to the stage 1 that helps in aerodynamics of the rocket and precise control of the rocket booster prior to the landing. And as I explained you, the reignitable engine is needed. The reignition happens because when the rocket is at a certain height, uh, it has to. The ignition should happen in order to in order to control the velocity of the rocket. So when rocket reach, reaches to a certain height, it has to slow down automatically. So this reignition process should happen, which will act against the Earth gravitational force. So when the reignition happens, the auto automatically the velocity of the rocket will be reduced and it will land slowly. Next one is the guidance system. Guidance system consists of three main things. INS, inertial navigation system, GPS and the pre-programmed computer. So the INS is responsible for calculating the location of the rocket and it uses different sensors to get the precise location of the rocket and GPS is used to know the exact current geolocation. And the onboard flight computer is programmed in such a way it runs an algorithm which fetches these values uh, from the INS and the GPS module and checks if it is correct or not as per the flight path as per the programmed way and if it is not going in a correct direction it sends some signals to the flight control system which will tilt the rocket in such a way that it should go in a particular flight path. And this algorithm is not open source and this is what happens uh, inside the flight computer, uh, inside the flight pre-programmed flight computer. It fetches the values from the sensors and it checks if it is correct or not, if it is going in the right direction or not. If it is not going in the right direction, it sends signals to the flight uh, program system, flight control system. 
so that is what this software powering falcon 9 i have tried a lot of uh, i have tried to search about this algorithm on various internet sources but i was able to uh, find out that this algorithm is written in c++ and of course for any iot based things for any flight control systems you need a low level language that is why c is considered or c++ is considered here and because you need high amount of precision and a fast calculation should happen the fast fast processing should happen for that low level language are needed and in case if there is any a mismatch in the code if there is any error in the logical error in the code it will result in huge amount of dos and million million of dollars will be loss right so for that reason you need high amount of precision this field is super super difficult and that is why this algorithm is not open sourced because it is so difficult to start a, to build a reusable rocket right so that is why i reading this book uh, written by walter isaacson a biography of elon musk because elon musk is entered into almost all spaces be it maybe automobile engineering uh, electronics and communication engineering and of course the rocket science so that is why i started knowing about him little bit more by reading this book and it's available on amazon and kindle as well i recommend uh, reading this book and it you will get lot of new things and you will get to know how this man was able to master all different fields of engineering uh, all different fields of engineering and also there is a popular uh, netflix documentary which is written to space in case if you are interested in this kind of content definitely watch it out it was so fantastic and it so fascinated me to make this video possible and after watching that documentary i started digging more into this a uh, particular field and uh, it really fascinated me and yet it is a uh, very difficult uh, to, in order to anyone to understand uh, without any guidance so i hope you like this video i hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you like this uh, video in the comment section and sharing with your friends would be much appreciated until then this is your kiran signing off i'll see you guys in my next video